Hi everyone, my name is Zoe Noble and I'm a professional photographer and retoucher. I'm self-taught, learning everything I know from books, workshops and videos just like this. Today's video is all about cleaning the skin with the clone stamp tool. I'm really happy to share my knowledge with you, so let's get started. First, I'll delete this folder which has all my retouching inside. I'll drag it to the trash can icon at the bottom. And now we're back to our original. Before I do any retouching, I duplicate my background layer by dragging it to the new layer icon at the bottom, so I always have a copy of my original to go back to if I need to. I'll rename this retouching so we keep everything nice and organized. So today's tutorial is all about cleaning the skin with the clone stamp tool, and you can find this in your toolbar here. This is a really powerful tool. I use it for not only cleaning skin, but things like removing facial hairs or fixing makeup. So it's a great tool to master. The basic concept is you're cloning pixels from one area to another. You define the area you want to clone from by holding down the Option or Alt key, and you'll see your cursor will change to a crosshair. Now I can select my area, and you'll see a preview inside the cursor. If you don't see this, go up to the Window menu, and you want to select Clone Source. There's a checkbox which says Show Overlay, so make sure you have this selected. Now if I start brushing with the Clone Stamp tool, you can see it's cloning over pixels from my source area to this new area. I'll undo that by pressing Command Z on the Mac or Control Z on Windows. And one very important part of this tool are the blending modes, and they can be found in this drop down here. I only use the darken and the lighten blending modes when it comes to cleaning the skin, and I'll explain why after I show you my brush settings. So come up to the window menu and select brush and this is where you can change these clone stamp settings. So I have my transfer selected, and in these two drop downs, I have this set to off. I also have my build up selected. Now I'm gonna go up to the brush size, and here, this is always going to be changing depending on what it is I'm cloning over. So for skin work, I want a really small brush so that I'm not destroying too much of her skin texture and I'm only cloning a small amount of pixels at a time. Something like five pixels is a good starting point. The hardness I set at around 50%, but again, this will be changing to match the area that I'm working on. So my cloning is as seamless as possible. My blending mode I'll set to darken. Opacity is at 100% and flow is around 70%. My airbrush is selected and I have my aligned checked. So let me explain how this works. I'll choose my source area over her eyebrow. And now when I start cloning, the distance and direction from my source point will always stay the same, no matter how many times I lift up my brush. So let me undo those and I'll uncheck this. Now when I start cloning, the position of my source area will always be in the same place, so I'm always going to be cloning from her eyebrow. I'd have to redefine the source area to change that position. So I want to make sure this is selected, and I'm going to change my brush size back down to five pixels. My sample is set to current layer, so that just means I can only clone from the layer that I'm currently working on. And this is the first brush that I'll use when it comes to cleaning the skin. So I'm gonna to wanna to save this so I can toggle between brushes really quickly. Come up to your window menu and you wanna select tool presets. I already have this panel open down here. Let me delete these two tools so I can recreate them. And now you're gonna to wanna to select the hamburger icon and at the very top there is new tool preset. And this is gonna save everything you just inputted, the brush size, the blending mode, opacity, everything. So give it a really descriptive name. I'll call this Clean Darken. Now I want to create the inverse of this tool. So I'm going to set the blending mode to Lighten and I'll come down and save a new tool preset and call this Clean Lighten. So I can toggle between these two brushes really quickly. So why are those blending modes so important? Well, let me zoom in. I can see here she just has a small pimple under her eye, which is catching the light. So I know I want to remove this. If I set my blending mode to normal to show you why I don't recommend this, 
I'm going to make the brush size just a little bit bigger than this pimple because I want to cause the least amount of damage to her skin. And I'm going to source very close to the pimple so that I'm cloning pixels of the same texture and color into this new area. I've got the preview, so I'm using that to line up any creases to make sure the cloning is seamless. And I'm just going to push down once. So yes, this has removed it, but what it's also done is add a lot of extra pixels around that pimple. So I'm actually destroying a lot more of her skin texture than I needed to. A far less destructive way will be to use the darken blending mode, because all I want to do is to darken those brighter pixels. Let me show you. I'll resource again. And now when I clone over, the clone stamp tool will only affect the pixels lighter than in my source area. So it's only going to target those brighter pixels and leave the surrounding areas intact. The light and blending mode is the inverse of this. If I want to remove, say, this dark spot, then in the light and blending mode, the clone stamp tool will only affect pixels darker than in my source area. So with these two blending modes, I'm only affecting pixels that really need it, and I'm maintaining as much of her skin texture as possible. This is a really hard, precise brush, so it's not going to take a lot to clone over pixels. That's good because we want to keep as much of her skin texture intact as possible, and make sure that the areas that are really sharp are kept sharp, and we're not blending pixels together. In areas where the image is more out of focus, I'm going to have to reduce the hardness to make sure this tool is softer and it's matching the area I'm working on. I want my cloning to be as seamless as possible. I'm always resourcing, choosing the best skin to clone over into my new area. And this takes time. If you want high-end results, that's gonna take practice, but I promise you, you'll love the results. Also, I'm not trying to remove everything with this tool. I know the next part of my retouching will be the dodging and burning, and that will clean the skin even further. So things like uneven areas of skin or patchy skin, I can deal with that with the dodging and burning. This tool is more for things like removing blemishes or dry skin, fixing makeup or removing facial hairs. Um, and also I'm not zooming into crazy proportions. I know this image won't be printed large scale, so I don't need to remove every hair and pore. Somewhere around 50% is absolutely fine. So this is gonna take me a little bit of time. So let's speed through this. And once I've done all my cleaning, I can show you my results. finished cleaning my image, let's take a closer look. Here's the before and the after. Now I'm ready to go on to the next part of my retouching process, which is the dodging and burning, and that will clean the skin even further. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be sharing the rest of my retouching process in other videos, so please subscribe to my channel for updates, and if you enjoyed this tutorial, please like and share the video. Have a great day.